Today, we're gonna finally settle the debate free weights versus machines, which is better and why. This debate is a long-standing one in the fitness industry and it usually has two polar opposite claims. Person A claims that free weights are king, that free weights train all of the little stabilizer muscles that machines and things similar to machines don't. And person B who prefers machines basically says, well, free weights don't really matter anyway, they're too unstable and machines are where it's at because you can create much higher outputs on machines and you can build more muscle using them. Both of these people have a point but at the end of the day, both of them are missing a lot of the bigger picture in terms of what might actually be useful to consider in the context of a full training program. So rather than to pick sides, today we're really gonna discuss what the similarities and the differences are between using free weights and using machines. And as a consequence of that, we'll be able to better understand which is more appropriate given the context of the training scenario. So let's start out by talking about the similarities between free weights and machines. Whether you're using a dumbbell or whether you're using a chest press machine, Machine, both implements simply provide a source of external resistance against which we can train our bodies. So ultimately, whether you're using a machine or a free weight, that implement is a source of external resistance that you can use to grow muscle, get stronger, and all the things that we go to the gym to do. And this should be somewhat obvious, but picking your kid up off the ground or doing a bench press or doing something like going for a hike, it's all just our interaction with force. And ultimately we can break things down that way to look at the actual finer differences between implements. So because both free weights and machines simply provide force against us, we can look at the similarities in the context of specifically force. Now, force is somewhat of an abstract concept and it's usually measured indirectly through mass and acceleration. But force more specifically in practice really just refers to anything that can push or pull against us. And in addition, anything that we can push or pull against something else. All forces have three major properties. The first is a point of contact or a location against you. In order for a force to actually be considered in any physical scenario, it needs to make contact with the object or objects that you're looking at. The second is a direction. Every single force has a vector quality, which essentially means that it's contacting you, but it's contacting you and pushing or pulling you in a specific direction, which you can essentially designate with a straight line or straight arrow. All forces, regardless of what kind of force you're talking about, act in straight lines. In order to identify force in the gym, you can simply just draw arrows from the point of contact, which is the first force property that we looked at, and draw an arrow in the direction that the force is attempting to move another object. And the third property is a magnitude or an amount of that force. So we all intuitively know that picking up a 30 pound dumbbell is heavier than picking up a 20 pound dumbbell. And that's essentially what magnitude describes. The 30 pound dumbbell has a higher magnitude than the 20 pound dumbbell. So regardless of the scenario you're talking about, whether you're talking about a free weight or you're talking about a machine, you can simply break things down to the first principles of force and look at location, direction, and magnitude to figure out what that force is trying to do to the body. So fundamentally, free weights in machines are no different in that they provide force against our bodies. But what are some of the ways in which they are different and what might that mean in terms of applying machines or free weights across different contexts? The primary difference between free weights and machines is the constraint of the implement. So what is constraint? You can think of constraint as restriction of movement. If you lie down on a bench, right, to perform a dumbbell press or a barbell press, the bench essentially constrains you from falling backward. In addition, because the fact that your feet are on the ground when you do a dumbbell press or a barbell press, your feet constrain the motion of your trunk and your lower limbs. Now, the dumbbells though, in and of themselves are unconstrained, meaning that if you pick up a weight that's light enough, you can essentially do anything that you want with that dumbbell and that dumbbell will simply follow your hand. You can press the dumbbells over your face, you can press them over your chest, you can raise them over your head, you can do skull crushers. No matter where you put the dumbbell, the dumbbell will accommodate to where you move it as long as it's light enough. Now, of course, as you scale the magnitude, force property number three of the dumbbell, that in essence functions as a higher degree of constraint, meaning that if you pick up the heaviest dumbbells that you can, you attempt to do presses with them, you're not going to be able to do other exercises other than the one that you're doing and maxing out because that weight is now much higher and constrains the available motion to that one motion alone. But again, regardless of what you're trying to do with the dumbbell, or the barbell, you can essentially move it wherever you want within the constraints of the motion that you've chosen. Now, if we look at the other end of the spectrum and we start to look at machines, machines in and of themselves are constrained. And what that essentially implies is that no matter what you do to the machine and regardless of whatever machine you're talking about, you can't move the machine in any other direction from which it pivots. Now, of course, machines have adjustability. You can move seats higher or lower. You can change the position of padding. But beyond that, once you start the exercise, the machine is constrained by a very 
very specific path that is unchangeable regardless of what you do. So the machine in and of itself doesn't care where you sit, it doesn't care where you push, it only really moves in a single direction. So now the biggest distinction really becomes, which do we prefer? More constrained motions, as in machines, or less constrained motions, as in dumbbells or barbells? Well, in general, more constraint leads to more stability, more standardized reps, and as a consequence, more standardized technique. So if you have a very beginner and you're trying to teach them how to perform a press, it's likely that putting them in a chest press machine, provided it fits them well, will give you a higher likelihood of success in teaching that motion because of the fact that the machine is constrained and the client can really only do one of a number of things. On the other hand, if you were to try to give that person a dumbbell press, now they all of a sudden have to manage a lot of different forces and sort of wobbliness that the machine didn't alone provide. So in one scenario, when you create more constraint around the motion, you allow for more standardized reps in a scenario where someone may not be able to properly execute a skill, again, on their first time doing it. Now, of course, you can teach a beginner how to do a dumbbell press, but there are a lot of other options in terms of what they can create with their motion other than just the exact motion that you want them to. Now, take another scenario where imagine that you are dealing with a shoulder injury and you can only really press in one specific path that's comfortable for you. In that scenario, getting onto a machine and using a fixed constrained path might actually be something that works against your goals. In other words, for the same exact reason that in the first scenario, the machine was beneficial, in a second scenario where you're looking to constrain motion less, you may actually benefit from choosing an option like a dumbbell press, which is much more adjustable according to individual needs. Now, again, there's the trade-off in the dumbbell press, of the fact that you have less stability, and as a consequence of that, a greater likelihood to deviate your technique in the motion. But if any of you are a trained lifter or someone who's well-suited to the gym and has been training for a long time, you know that even something like a dumbbell press, although it is unconstrained, effectively becomes more constrained the more advanced that you get, the better adapted to the movement that you get, and the heavier weights that you lift. So the take-home point of all of this is simply to say that machines are not better than free weights in absolute, and free weights are not better than machines. Which of these two options you choose should depend on the individual needs and the individual scenario that you're trying to problem solve for. So again, if you're in a scenario where standardizing reps to a higher degree, using higher degrees of stability and more constraint is more appropriate, then using machines is a great option as long as that machine fits your specific structure and the goals that you're trying to serve with that exercise. If you're trying to create more movement options and less constraint and a greater degree of adjustability within a motion, you can choose something that's more free weight related like a dumbbell press because that's going to allow you to adjust the position of your arm according to your specific goal. Now this of course doesn't mean that free weights aren't limited in what you can do because if you're performing something like a barbell back squat, you obviously have the constraint of having to balance over your feet. So the specific constraints that I'm referring to are really just within the weights themselves and not necessarily the mechanics of every single motion. So hopefully the point here is clear. It's likely that at some point in a program you're going to be using free weights and you're going to be using machines and what should really determine which of those things you use are the specific context related to the goal and the individual performing the exercise. If you like this video and you want to learn more from me, please consider enrolling in my online anatomy and biomechanics course. The course contains over 15 hours specifically dedicated to improving your understanding of anatomy and physics and how it applies to lifting weights. Over 3,000 students have enrolled in this course and have reported back that it's the most easy to digest material that doesn't include any sort of boring textbook lecture that you might normally find in a typical college curriculum. So if you want to improve your ability to lift and as a consequence, grow muscle more easily and reduce your pain in the gym, check out the link in the description.